Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about GitHub Code Spaces. It's uh, the third service that uh, we are covering this channel. And if you want to check out the other videos, just um, have a look in the description. Uh, for now, uh, Code Spaces is another VM provider that allows you to spin up a few virtual machines with your code. Um, you just need to point your repository and you're good to go. And let me showcase uh, how to do it. So I'm already logged in. And as you can see, if I go to my repositories, I do have a just a few tests in here. Uh, so there is this menu here, code spaces. Let's get started. So you can start out of templates. So you, you'll see here that they provide a few templates that you can use to start your virtual machine if you don't want to use one of your already working uh, code repositories. So there is this blank. So if we use this blank, it's going to spin up one that is not actually attached to any repository, which is quite useful if you just want to um, test a quick script or uh, and create a something just a, as an MVP or some sort, or if you don't have the repository yet, you just want to spin up and test out an idea. And then if that's good enough, you can go ahead and create a repository. Let's give an example here. So let's just put it out there, index.html. So uh, here's just a test, um, test text. It's not how you should do it, but in any case, just to show that from now on, I could publish this to GitHub and continue my work later. But if I don't do that, if I just go ahead and close it, so let's just do that, close, leave. Uh, you can see that if I go back here, the code space is still here. So you still have access to that uh, if you needed to uh, continue working on that or if you lost access uh, or a connection issue. And here you can decide to delete. Um, so there is no risk involved in not having that set up with, uh, on GitHub with a repository to some extent. So if I want to start working on that, let's give it a go. Let's try uh, testing, publish. Yeah, include index. So it's going to publish. And now I have all the capabilities here. Uh, so I should fix this in all this stuff. So let's try here. It's going to show up. Test, commit. It's going to warn me it's not staged. Now it's staged. Yes, synchronize and send. And we're good to go. So if I go back to my code spaces, I could go to my repositories. Here it is, test. Testing publish. It's all there. Now I can go ahead here. It's you can see it's active, which means I'm still paying for that and all of the this that stuff. So now it's gone, which means I have not, I didn't lose anything because if I go here repositories, I could spin up an, an exactly same copy from here with code on the main branch, and with that I can continue my work when I left off. Give it some time, so it's going to spin up everything. And here it is, everything where I left off. And if I go back to my code spaces, I can leave it running. Uh, it will automatically. So if I go here to settings, let me show you the usage. So in my code spaces settings, I can set some uh, configurations, uh, some defaults in the full idle timeout. So after 30 minutes, it will automatically um, go idle, which means you only pay for the storage. Um, in here, you can set this similar to Gitpod to 14 days, let's say. It will automatically delete everything. And if we go to billions in usage, you can keep track of how much you have still left in terms of um, free usage. Uh, it resets, so it's uh, it's going to reset today. 
Um, and here you can see exactly uh, what you consume a lot. So you, you start with two cars and you can go all the way up to 32 cars. So I'm going to make a video on the, uh, as a comparison between, let me show here. So I can make a video on GitHub into code spaces, git pod, and code sandbox. So we have these three services and what each provides as a free resource. So you can see here, four cores, eight gigabytes of RAM and code sandbox. So just leave a like and let me know in the comments and see you next time.